Hey everybody, it's Seth and Paul with the Everything Money Channel. On this episode, Paul talks about what are dividends, what companies are offering them, why we should go after them, what are the percentages means. We're going to get rid of all that confusion you've ever had. Watch the show right now when you're investing in stocks. We're going to talk about dividends right now with your Uncle Paul on the Everything Money Channel. Boom, baby. Paul, what's a dividend? In this video, I'd love to learn more. I, uh, I I hear they're good, and I hear some companies pay them, but besides that, I'm kind of confused. Like, I owned AT&T for a long time, ended up selling, but I always heard they had a great dividend. So what are they? How do I get them? Tell me the story about these and why companies give them out. So you said they're good. What am I going to say? Not necessarily. Not necessarily good. There are pluses and minuses of dividends. Okay. So a dividend is essentially what a company pays out to its shareholders as a share of the profits. Uh So let's say, for example, a company has $10,000 in profit for the year. And they say to their shareholders, hey, thanks for being with us. We're going to pay out $3,000 to you guys. That's the dividend. Okay? Mm -hmm. Very simple. It's just them taking their money after tax already, by the way, and giving you $3,000, which you go pay tax on again. Okay. So it's a double taxation. That's one of the bad things about dividends. It's not very tax efficient. If they just kept the $3,000 in their company, they wouldn't be taxed again. But they already got taxed to get the 10000 and now they pay you out 3000 you got to go pay your taxes. Mm-hmm. Why do companies pay dividends? I don't know. Okay, well... I would think it makes them more attractive to buyers. Bam. Okay. So, a company that might have a stagnant stock price... A company like AT&T. AT&T, yes. Like you just said. Has it moved in a long time. They might sit there and say, listen, we have a ton of free cash flow. And we're so big, it's hard to reinvest that cash flow to good return. So what should we do? Let's give the money back to our investors. Because now the investor might sit there and say, hey, for AT&T, if I'm getting a 7% dividend, I don't care if the stock only goes up 2 or 3% a year. Because all in all, I'll still make 9 to 10%. That can be the big benefit for shareholders. I'd love to see a 9 or 10% increase in likes right now. 9 or 10% increase? We want more than that. <laughs> Paul, don't get, too, don't get greedy. <laughs> I'm getting greedy. <laughs> please, please smash that like button right now. And if you're interested in AT&T stock, AT&T the company and the stock, Paul's going to analyze AT&T right after this video. So look in our YouTube feed. Keep going, Paul. I'm glad we just got that done. So... When you're looking at that, if you get a 7% dividend, you won't care if the stock only goes up 2 or 3% a year. No one's giving a 7% dividend. It sounds like too much. Uh, actually, I think AT&T was giving a 7% dividend. Oh, I should have not sold, huh? Uh, it, was it? I think they do. Yeah, I think they give an 8, 7% dividend. We can look it up. So I'm looking like, uh, for example, IBM is 5.3. Yep. TC Energy Corp is 5.3. Yep. Bank of Hawaii, which I know you're a big, big spender <laughs> in, is 4.7. But So historically... Going back to the beginning of 1871, the historical data, the average dividend yields around 4%. That's pretty right nice. Now, yeah, right now, the S&P is around 1.7%. So wait, 4% of what, Paul? Of the, so if you invest $100,000 into the market, on average, it would have paid you $4,000 a year. 4% of that money. Oh, so I thought it was 4% of like the stock price. That's or... exactly what it is. So if you spend... $100,000 of the stock, you're going to get 4%. It doesn't matter what the stock price is. Okay. No, I thought it's like actually 4% of the stock price. So if the stock price is 36, is. then I get yeah, it. Oh, correct. okay. But if you buy 100 shares, you're spending $3,600. You're getting 4% of that either way. Okay, got it. Okay, for, for, for fourth grade math, that'll be the third video that we'll do to explain. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying, Paul. We're, yeah. not, we're, not, we're not hearing the same way. Like, just because I spend 100 grand on a... On Berkshire Hathaway versus... Okay, let's do the math here. Okay, sorry. Let's give it... No, this is that's really where, good. That's somebody I get else confused. is going to be confused by this. Yes. Let's say a stock is selling for 10%. Titan sellers $10. Okay. And you have how many shares? Give me a number of shares. 10. 10. How much have you spent? $100. Okay. Now, let's say the dividend yield is 5%. Uh-huh. How much are you getting in that $10 share? A quarter? 5% of 10 is what? Oh, sorry. 50 cents. 50 cents. Mm-hmm. How much are you getting total then if you have 10 shares? $5. Okay. Ah, oh, still 5%. So what's $5 of $100? Oh, it is the same. Okay. It's still 5%. I thought it actually, okay. It's still the same way. 
whether you look at share price or total dollars invested, it'll be interchangeable at some point. I did not know that. Okay, great. That's great. By the way, I'm glad you said it because you're our host and I'm sure somebody else had the Because I was always saying, well, I'm only getting 5% of AT&T at 36 bucks. I was like, that's nothing. Like, I'm not, I'm not, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, but if you it's buy nothing. 100 shares of it, it's still Got it. big numbers. Got it. Okay. So, so historically, back in the past, companies paid dividends as a way... When I say back in the past, 1930s, 40s, and 50s, it was their way because the stock market wasn't as mature as it is now. It didn't have as much fluctuation. You like mature. You like mature. (laughs) Mature. Mature. (laughs) Did I just spit mature? Yes. Thank you. I caught it. Go ahead. They liked paying dividends because it was a way of people. That was how people live. They're like, okay, I get my dividend deal. I make my money. I go reinvest it, et cetera. Nowadays, as companies have used the money to grow very fast, especially with more and more technology and a fast-growing economy, fast-growing companies... They want to keep the money in. So another reason companies will not pay a dividend is if they're fast growing. Why is that, Seth? Fast growing companies, fast growing. Uh, people are already going to be drawn to buying the stock so they don't need to give out extra money, free money? That's the way the investor looks at it. But from a company standpoint, why would a company that's fast growing not want to pay a dividend? Uh, they need the money to continue to grow? Correct. So a lot of big, fast growth companies won't pay a dividend because they're like, listen, we're growing fast now. We need all the cash we can get because Mm -hmm. if we invest this dollar, instead of giving it to you, we can invest it and get a much higher return and grow our company. And that therefore will make your your values, your stock worth more money. Mm -hmm. Okay. So fast growing companies tend to not like doing it. The reason I don't like companies paying dividends is only if they have other use of the money to make the business better. Either paying down debt, for example, if you have a, um, a lot of times if you're paying, let's say you're paying, let's say the company is paying 4% in debt. Why would they not just take that money and pay down the debt? It gives you a 4% return anyhow, right? You're getting a 4% return by paying down that debt. So if you're going to pay a dividend yield of 6, 7%, you're better off from the company standpoint, paying off the debt, paying less dividend, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But dividends are the way that people will look at it and say, oh, no matter what the stock price does, at least I'm getting something for it every single year. And for retirees, imagine you're a retiree and you have a few companies that pay a really high dividend. All of a sudden you can get 5 to 7% on it. Well, hell, most people, most financial advisors will tell you to spend 4% of your money every year. You're able to cover that just by, just by the dividend payment. So dividends are wonderful. Companies, you want to make sure companies will pay them they can afford to. Because a lot of times, there's a thing called a dividend trap. What's a dividend trap? What's a dividend trap? Seth? Sounds dangerous. I it don't does know. sound dangerous. What would you guess it means? Um, oh, okay, okay, so... Um, dividend trap. It's sort of a ploy for companies to offer a high dividend, even though they're not doing well. You know, it's almost like we planned this ahead of time, and we really didn't, people. Like, now, I would s- say, Paul, I, this is actually a strength of yours, completely switching topics. You know, we watch um, some shows, and we both love people like Graham Stephan. This is completely unscripted, Paul, knowing all of this shit off the top wow. of your head. Thank you. We don't discuss anything. I just hit you with that AT&T stock, because that's what we should do next. And um, so what you're seeing is, un- like, this is all out of Paul's mind. If you want to pick it, he's here to, to help you. Keep going, Paul. So a dividend trap, what will happen is a company will sit there and see their stock languishing or going down. So they will increase their dividend by a big amount to get people to go, oh, wow, look, they're paying 8%. Let me go buy Let's the buy. company. Yes. What we got to look for is, can the company actually afford the dividend? So if you remember from previous episodes, what metric do we look at to see what a company can afford to pay the dividend? Uh, a current, uh, no, not assets. Nope. Oh, I don't know then. Free cash flow. Oh, free cash. So remember, they use their free cash flow to pay dividends. That's one of the things they can do is pay dividends. Got it. You said that. So a lot of times, what you have to look at is to see, do they have enough free cash flow to pay their dividends? So let's pick a company out. Look at my own Microsoft's kind of extreme example. Microsoft pays about a one percent dividend. So for a share of two hundred bucks, they're going to pay you two dollars a year. Go to IBM. All right, let's go to IBM. Or. Okay, IBM. Let's just go to IBM. International business machines. Okay, IBM pays a 5% dividend. All right? So on a $130 stock, they're going to pay $6.50 every single year in dividends. How often does this number change, this dividend number? Well, as the stock price goes up and down, it's reflected in there, right? If a stock fell in half, the dividend yield would double, right? Because you're still getting paid. So let's say, for example, if the dividend yield is, if if the stock's $100, and it pays a 5% dividend yield. That's five bucks, right? Yeah. Let's say the stock fell to 50 bucks and they're still paying a $5 dividend. 
Oh, I'm asking, does the dividend change? Oh yeah, they can change it. In fact, one of the things to look for is you want to find companies that have, they, they, they create their own dividend policy. They'll sit there and say, we're going to pay this dividend. Oh, company's getting better. Things are getting better. We're going to increase the dividend. And over time, they increase the dividend. Okay. Right? So with IBM, they pay a 5% dividend yield. So you can look at that as a piece of the share price or all the shares together at $115 billion, 5% of that, the market cap, mm-hmm. the market cap of $115 billion, $115 billion times 5%, it means every year they're going to pay 5.308, call it $5.1 billion. Let's just call it $5 billion in dividends mm-hmm. to make it easier. $5 billion in dividends. Okay, so my next job is I go to the cash flow statement. And again, this is everything you can get for free on the internet on Google Finance, Yahoo Finance. You don't need Y charts. Mm-hmm. So, so to figure out if they can afford that dividend, I look at their free cash flow. That's their cash from operations, $14.8 billion minus $3 billion in, in capital expenditures, and that is $11.8 billion. Mm-hmm. Can they afford to pay the, the $5 billion? Yeah, yeah, they can easily it. afford it. They yeah. have over double the amount of money. So I look at at and saying, okay, in what past years could they afford it? Every year. 15 minus 4. You're still talking about IBM, not IBM. They can, they can afford it pretty much every year. So mm-hmm. I'm not worried about IBM's ability to pay the dividend. This is a, probably a very secure dividend. But again, companies will do what's called a dividend trap, or the stock price will fall so much that you see the dividend yield go up, and you'll be like, oh, let me go buy it. But there might be a reason why the stock has fallen so much. Their free cash flow is plummeted. Their profits plummeted. And they might have to change their dividend policy, which is what happened recently with companies like Carnival Cruise Line, CC. A lot of companies recently that got hurt in COVID, they all canceled their dividend. Mm-hmm. A lot of retail stores, they said, listen, we need to hoard our money. So dividends, dividends are important for people to get a piece of return mm-hmm. as time goes on, in addition to the stock going up in price. Seems Very awesome. Simple. Listen, I love it. Uh, You know, my friend Gary, he buys smaller companies that he wants to see them reinvest their capital to grow, which is what we do here at Crossroads Group. At Crossroads Group, we don't pay very many dividends out. We pay ourselves our salary, and all the profit goes right back into the business. We don't believe in paying our partners dividends. Podcast hosts. and What was that? (laughs) Podcast (laughs) hosts, producers. Which reminds me, uh, your pay is going to zero. (laughs) Like and subscribe, please, 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 because we'll need need you all the help we can get. Um, Okay, Paul, great. So I like dividends. Uh, You know, know, when when the markets go to where I want them to go, I'm hoping to get 5% dividend yield because this is a nice check every year to get and go, hey, I got this. They can't take this away from me. The market can never take this away Mm -hmm. from me. It's there. Even in a loss? Well, yeah. I mean, once they paid me a dividend, how do they get it back? It's there. It's mine. It's gone. I mean, it's, it's gone from the company's coffers. It's in my hands. Yeah. They can't take it back. Good stuff. I like it. Thanks for watching the channel, the Everything Money channel. Please like, the, like uh, smash that like button below. And if you have questions for Paul, email him. No, I'm kidding. Right down below or email him. And if you have a deal, if your aunt is selling a 300 unit in Colorado, you better call your Uncle We've Paul. been talking a lot about stocks lately because they've been very hot. Go on. We always focus on real estate. We do a lot of real estate stuff. And these are just ebbs and flows. Not many people have asked us about real estate stuff lately. Why is that? I think it's because stocks are so hot right now. Yeah. I mean, stocks were at, S&P was at 2200 on March 20th. And we're looking at all-time highs today. We're back at 3375 I saw this morning. Crazy. crazy. I don't get it. Thanks for watching Everything Money Channel with Paul and Seth. Bye. See you.